Hello, I'm Aki X Toy Cat, and Mojang just brought out a brand new snapshot, and it's just for Java, but includes all sorts of fun changes that bring it in line with the Bedrock version. Some of these are nerfs, some of these are common sense, and some of these give us a vibe as to when this update, 121.50 or 121.4, will actually be available for everyone to play around with and enjoy the creaking and its heart. What's going on with the snapshot and its release date? Let's explain all of that today, because hello, I'm Aki X Toy Cat, by the way, and this is an update news video. This is a brand new snapshot which is launched on the Java version with out a bedrock equivalent, and there are lots of fun features inside of it, but the first one I want to point out is one that you probably never thought of, because did you know, when you have a baby cat and a color wolf, uh, the color will actually be mixed from the parents. That is to say, if you breed two animals together, let's say two cats, I have a bunch of salmon, um, I don't know if I've actually tamed these guys yet, so let's tame two cats, uh, so we can actually have their collars, and then let's give one of them a yellow collar and one of them a red collar. Uh, what will happen now, after you do this, is they'll be able to breed together, and the baby will have a collar, which is a mix of the two. This is really, really weird if you ask me, so that should be orange, right? Is it any amount orange? I actually can't see. Do we have to wait for it to grow up, maybe? Um, but when the baby grows into an adult, which will happen after far too much baby salmon, that was literally 50 salmon later, by the way. As you can see, the cat has an orange collar to show that he was a offshoot of one of these two. There is no logic to this change. Let's be entirely clear about that. Uh, the color of your collar is not a heritable factor. However, it is the sort of feature that players expect when they play Minecraft, and so the same thing has been done for dogs. Let's pick a more fun color combination. Let's go with light blue and red. Do you think that'll work? I actually don't know. So let's find out in the fun way together. Um, let's give you some bones and then let's give you some bones. And now if we wanted to, we'd be able to breed one of them and then we'd have to give them both some steak or something uh, that they do both love. Is it called cooked beef in the crap? You know what? Mo Mojang, I can't believe you taught them this way, but let's give one of them some cooked beef, one of them some cooked beef, and let's show you what happens when they actually breed together because I'm expecting purple, but I'm actually not entirely sure. It could be magenta. It could, could be nothing, I guess. And so the baby just has a red collar, which is not a mix at all. So I guess there's just a list of acceptable ones. Okay, I would say that most people expect that those two colors mixed together should create purple, but just to make sure we're following traditional Minecraft logic, here is a full red and a full blue as opposed to light blue, creating ourselves a purple dyed uh, wolf color. This is a very, very minor change, but it is a fun piece of parity, just like it's a fun piece of parity for Bedrock users that they finally aligned the suspicious stoop from Java and Bedrock, and this is something I was actually really waiting for as a Bedrock player, but it seems as though, just like every single time we win for parity as a community, it looks like there's a bit of a monkey paw going on here because they've aligned the two durations by nerfing the Java one to come down to bedrock in every case except for blindness. On blindness, you can now get 11 seconds, which is to say the one negative effect you can now have for much longer. Should you want 11 seconds of blindness instead of seven, you are now in a much better position. But otherwise, every single suspicious stew, that is to say a stew crafted with both mushrooms, a bowl, and a particular type of flower, will now give you less of an effect. This is honestly not that big of a deal for wither or fire resistance. Most people weren't drinking these potions to get their five seconds of jump boost, and so six or five seconds isn't a big deal. But personally, I do think regeneration going down by a second sort of is important. But it especially sucks that now when you try to give someone weakness, you'll give them a few seconds less of it. And so if you could argue there was any tactical benefit to tricking someone into suspicious stew, it has now been substantially weakened. I don't think most people would care about it that way, but a lot of people probably do care about this fun new change because bees will no longer interact with closed eye blossoms. They also will uh, be poisoned. Uh, they, they will no longer be poisoned if they touch any closed eye blossoms because they've now just decided to not care about them at all. That is still, a, a lot of people think, oh yeah, this is a dumb interaction. I'm glad they got rid of it. But it's important to note that at night, they will still interact with the eye blossoms and they're still poisonous to the bees. Uh, but during the day, I, I love that you're hanging around here, Mr. Dinnerbone. But during the day, it's worth mentioning that you will no longer have your bees just poison themselves. And uh, yeah, they won't be tempted by the, uh, the, the the temptresses that really are here. And so next up, let's talk about the creaking because an activated creaking will not move as a player is looking at it. We're going to go into the creaking zone for this, but first I actually want to point out something fun about Java, which you might not know if you're a Bedrock player, and that is that they've been working on massively redefining how their data uh, packs in-game work. And basically this means that you can do all sorts of fun things that you, uh, you know, like uh, basically via data stream code. And right now they've made it possible to make all sorts 
of fun models, but this is one of just many changes that you'll be able to find. So let's uh, place this down here, by the way, and then set it to <laughs> night time. Uh, so time set night. And then let's see what happens as we go inside and a creaking spawns. Because again, now they will not look at you and they'll also have full resistance to you. So am I in peaceful maybe? No. Nope. Let's uh I don't I don't see a creaking though. Am I am I doing it wrong? Is it not nighttime enough? By the way, just a reminder, these are now open eye blossoms, and so even the dinner bone bee is having a terrible time. But yeah, coming back over here. I was really hoping for the coolest creaking effect, but I guess I can show you using a creative one right here. Um, the creaking is the most annoying mod for creative. As you can see, uh, if I look at the creaking, uh, he is going to stop entirely. And also, um, he's not going to have any resistance to my knockback. Right now, he will just die if I punch him because he's a creative one. But imagine if I punch him and he doesn't. Wow, look how effective this video is. But you know what else this video is effective at mentioning? The fact that there is a resin brick being used for armor instead of resin clumps. This is a weird job of bedrock difference in my opinion. But yeah, they decided to use resin clumps. And I, I honestly think the resin brick just makes way more sense. I mean, compare this to an iron ingot or a gold ingot. And yeah, the logical way that you should apply, say, resin into, uh, you know, which is uh, everyone's favorite thing. The way you should apply it to your gear should be um, this, in my opinion. But yeah, as you can see, uh, no working. Uh, actually, wait, why, why no working? <laughs> what is it meant? Is it now? Is it the other way around? And now it's the resin clump and not the resin brick? Oh. Wait. What? Yeah, I think that there is a bug in this snapshot because the resin clump specifically doesn't work. Uh, which, by the way, is not true for most items. I can't put, say, a stake in there. It's not going to let me. The resin clump no longer works. Item can't be upgraded this way. But the resin brick definitely doesn't seem to. That is very, very, very interesting. Uh, that is something that they will be fixing before the final release, which is maybe now the right time to point that out because there's one more feature in this update. Obviously, it's the fact that if you have a mob uh, that is capable of picking up items, uh, a hypothetical of this could be a zombie, but anything else would uh, do too. So let's imagine we've got a zombie in here. And let's imagine we give that zombie our Neverite sword. Uh, there's a 55% chance, if you're at hard, of him being able to pick up that sword. Uh, but something interesting that they'll do right now, you are such a bad cat. Anyway, something interesting that they'll do right now is they'll actually, uh, na uh, they, they previously uh, were not able to pick up items if they already had one. Now they will pick up a new item if it replaces one with higher value. So as this gold ingot shows, he will change from each of these to the next one. He'll, if you had leather a tunic, he would split that on. But if he then had a leather tunic that was enchanted, he would find that to be better. Then if you gave him a diamond chest plate, he'd find that to be even better. And then if it was a, you know, more improved diamond uh, chest plate, he would put that on too. Again, my guy does not have the equipment, and there's a fun command you can use to summon him in that I don't have right now for you, because I've instead been thinking about what this actually means for the release of this update. As much as I'd love to show you how zombies picking up armor works, I think most people are much more concerned with, oh yeah, the entire creaking and the entire pale forest side of this update. When is this actually coming out? It's a very good question, and one which Mojang are deliberately being tight-lipped about, but we have some very crucial piece of information which have just been backed up by this week's snapshot. So the first, is they're calling it the winter drop, and they've said repeatedly it'll be dropping in the second half of 2024. Uh, obviously, there is a maximum amount of time that you can drop that is both winter and 2024, and we're technically in the window right now. However, we know that there's going to be at least a two to three week warning because the bedrock version of this update is still in development, or at least was in development last week, and there is at least a two to three week certification period that's usually closer to four weeks for major updates, and so we'll know about two to four weeks ahead of time when it update is actually coming out. And so if we see a week like, say, this one, where we don't have a new beta and preview for Bedrock yet, and indeed where the Java snapshot doesn't add brand's new winter drop features, which would have to be replicated on the Bedrock version, but instead mostly focuses on parity and tiny changes, then you start to get the little hints that maybe they are wrapped up with major features inside of it. I mean, even if they weren't wrapped up now, we'd have two to three weeks max uh, before they absolutely had to uh, drop it, because again, uh, unlike the Java version, which could release snap shots all the way up until a day before release if they really felt comfortable doing it. Uh, the Bedrock version is limited by all of the platforms of which it's on, and so that is a little bit of a good sign, and that means that if we're expecting to see the update soon, then we're probably approaching the naming event for it. Honestly, this is one of my least favorite things about Minecraft's new era of drops, is that they're keeping the idea
idea that a naming of a drop should be a major event somewhere near the end. I don't like that they did this for the Tricky Trials update because they could have given us that name all the way when they first announced the update, but they argued, oh yeah, well we might have added new features and changed it and we don't want to lock ourselves in, but they basically did lock themselves in and with the case of the creaking uh, canopies, they know exactly what they were going to add and maybe added two or three more features here or there and so either they don't come up with the update names or the drop names when they come up with the drop or they want to do a big marketing hype event, maybe they're going to drop the trailer at the same time and that's what I think is slightly more likely. The way we'll know for sure though is if tomorrow, Thursday, is a day that betas and previews can drops and has traditionally been more popular than uh, uh, Wednesday indeed, if tomorrow there is no drop for Minecraft Bedrock or if even crazier they start work on 1.21.60, we will know that that two to three week timer has officially started and then we'll know roughly when this update is coming out. Otherwise though, this is just a little bit of speculation that it looks as though uh, that the end of November and the start of December is much more likely than late in December, which means they'll be working on the next drop before the end of the year. Or taking like a month off, I don't know how Mojang structures their holiday, but at the very least in the, you know, the <laughs> I, I, I don't know how things are in Sweden, but that means that at the very least in the Redmond office in the USA, uh, that things might be happening that way. Anyway though, that's just what we get from this week's snapshot. As a Bedrock player, I am actually very happy of the fact uh, that they've decided to look at Bedrock and Java systems and then implement the Bedrock side of the features. This is an amazing once in a lifetime thing if you're a Bedrock player. However, I think it's crazy that they happen to do it for the one thing where I would have been, uh, you know, literally ambivalent to it towards it happening. And uh, I guess that's just a reminder that there are all sorts of tiny parity changes they need to make. And for the very tiny ones, I guess Bedrock players can have a win, which is something that you might want. I mean, right now is a time uh, that getting a win uh, maybe is important for some of you out there. And so with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.